Hey, Salt Lake City dog owners. Let me uh, let me intro this video and tell you uh, what this is going to be about. First of all, though, if you're watching this on YouTube, down below in the description, there's a link where you can sign up to get a free 10 part series on how we go about solving just about anything. You know, whether it's aggression or leash pulling or jumping or chewing or your dog goes crazy when someone rings the doorbell. We're doing a free 10 part video training on on how to deal with those things. Um, whether to teach you how to do it or to at least intro you into how we do things here at my company, Ty the Dog Guy. So go down below there and click on it. Now, um, I wanna intro this video on, on what we're talking about here. We're talking about what's the right, <laughs> we get questions all the time like, how do I discipline my dog? Should I discipline my dog? Should I just use treats? Should I just use, you know, should I use corrections? Should I use shock collars? Should I use pinch collars? Should I use clickers? All sorts of stuff like that one of the biggest questions out there. So to start this 10 part series, I wanted to get into it and explain to you exactly what you need to know about should you use discipline corrections and things like that. Break some myths for you, some things that a lot of people believe that just simply aren't true. So uh, welcome to this video. Uh, keep watching and we're going to tell you all about the best way to train your dog. All right, guys, I want to talk about um, styles of training because lots of folks out there think it must you must train this way, you must train that way. There are no musts, but there are big pluses and minuses to, to different ways of training. So what I mean by that is I, I, I pretty much want to talk about the difference between balanced training versus pure positive training. Now pure positive training is the type of stuff that you might find at like a big box pet store or sometimes just some like community group classes or things like that. And I'm talking of course about, you know, just using treats, no corrections, um, nothing like that. Now. Um, Using positive training methods is important, but in training, there's essentially two components of every single training thing that you want to teach your dog, whether it's just great obedience or, um, you know, to get rid of behavior problems. There's two components. The dog has to understand the concept and he has to do it really well with distractions. Um, and so the understanding the concept, you can do that with pure positive, meaning if I want my dog to understand how to sit, I can take some treats and get him to sit get them to lie down, get them to come. And in fact, a lot of you have probably already done that by the time you're watching this video. Because by the time a lot of folks come to us and they're interested in our training, it's because they've done some pure positive and they recognize there's a very low ceiling. And what I mean by that is they get to where the dog understands everything, but he's not gonna do it with distractions because he's gonna say, well, you know, if I'm the dog, well, I, I like the treat, but I'd really like to chase the cat into the street far more than I want your treat, or chase the tennis ball into the street far more than I want the treat that you're holding. Um, or, you know, I like you uh, and I like treats, but there's a person and I want to go like pull and go say hi to them, you know, on our walk. Or even worse than that, there's a dog or a person and I'm, I'm the dog, I'm feeling aggressive and I want to go lunge and bark at them. So I don't really care about your treat or anything like that. Now, those that do the pure positive training are going to say things like, well, you just need to work a little bit farther away and gradually you'll get closer. But in reality, what often happens is it takes months and months and months to get even just a little bit closer so that your dog's not pulling or a little bit closer without your dog being aggressive. It's way you know, too difficult on the dog. The dog has to put up with way too much stress and trying to work through all of these distractions. And it's way too difficult on the owners. So in theory, it's nice to think about like, oh, let's get our dogs to be super obedient while, um, you know, uh, yeah, get our dogs to be really obedient with no corrections and everything's just love and kisses and things like that. It's a nice concept, but in the real world, it just doesn't really pan out. And so now the flip side of that is we don't have to be harsh with our dogs at all. We don't need to be painful. We don't need to hurt them. We don't need to, corrections don't need to be harsh in order to be effective. And so that's where, and I'm going to show you how these work here in a second. We'll, we'll, we'll zoom in really close here in a second. But um, the tools that we use for training to actually give corrections, they might look a little bit harsh, but used properly, we can use very low levels. And it's not about pain. It's not about, it's about communication. So I often will ask people, are you willing to maybe like pull on the dog to get him to come, for example? I mean, not even harshly, but just kind of pull on him. If the answer is yes, then using an e-collar would be something you'd be totally fine with because it's such a light level. It's the equivalent of like maybe just a little bit of a pull on a leash. It's not about pain, it's not about shock, it's not about this jolting sensation. It's just about you know getting, um, uh, getting the dog's attention and communicating a concept. 
And so the bottom line is, if you do pure positive training, that's fine up until a point, but if you're looking for training that works in the real world, a more balanced approach to where you're using a lot of positive reinforcement and you're balancing that with proper correction that's humane is really what's going to help you get to your goals. So I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about with these. We're going to zoom in nice and close. And I'm going to show you how these, <laughs> these ugly um, training collars work. So give me a second here and I'll show you how that is. Hey, I just wanted to break away real quick. Uh, talk to our uh, those of us here in Salt Lake. Well, in Salt Lake City, I'm not in Salt Lake City right now. You can probably tell that. Uh, but those of us with dogs in Salt Lake City, just how important this concept is of a more balanced approach versus just treats. Um, almost all of our clients are really big into well, not big into, but like they want to go hiking. Um, they want to take their dog to the farmers market. Um, you know, they live in neighborhoods where there's dogs and other stuff like that. Um, your ability to get results from your dog is going to be so much smaller if you're just using treats no correction no balance so anyways just wanted to break away and, and speak specifically to the salt lake city folks um and just talk about how important this is so i'll get i'll let you get back to it all right so let me kind of show you here i always kind of joke that this looks like some sort of dungeon tool um but used properly the reason this is so effective is because of how of its design. This is called a pinch collar, not because it pinches, because it doesn't. You see how the, the, you might not be able to see, but you see how the tines are wider than the eyelets, you gotta pinch it to get it to go in. Um, but the reason this is so effective is, think about like a flat leash, or sorry, a flat collar. And by a flat collar, I mean just the type of collar that any dog wears, you know, with tags on it and stuff. Like if you're trying to give a little bit of a correction because your dog's pulling at the leash or acting aggressive or, or whatever the case might be, and you give a tug, any tug you give is lessened because it travels the whole length of the dog's neck, which means if you want the dog to feel it, you gotta use a lot of strength. And number one, I don't wanna do that. Number two, most of our clients, they're not, they're not gonna be yanking their dogs around like crazy. And, and number three, it's not very effective. You have to use way too much power to get your dog to listen, and it's, it's not, not super effective. Same thing with like a body harness. You know, you've got a body harness on your dog, any tug you give is lessened because it's absorbed by the entire body. And so the value of a collar like this is I can use very little correction. Um, and you're gonna see during this 10 day course how we use very little correction to teach a recall, to teach the dog how to stay, to teach him to go to a bed and like, you know, to do all of these wonderful things, we're gonna teach exactly how to do that using very little correction. And so that's why I say my personal belief is that using these tools is actually the most humane way to correct because, or sorry, the most humane way to train a dog because training a dog, correction is, is a critical component. You've got to correct, but you've got to do it in a way that there's leverage and you're not using like a whole bunch of strength versus strength. So you see, like I, this is not like a painful thing at all. Um, I, I challenge you to go to the pet store and try it and kind of like say, oh yeah, because every time I do this with our clients, they're like, oh really, that's it? They were expecting like stab, you know, they were expecting some, you know, really powerful thing and it's really not like that. So it's just very kind of light pressure. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's so much, it's actually far more humane than a lot of different uh, collars. Now the e-collar that we're using, um, same thing. It looks nasty. In fact, I'm gonna turn it on here. So I'll give you an example here. The level that we're using for this guy to teach, well, you might not even be able to see him, but the, but the guy that you're gonna see in this 10 part series, the level that we're using for him is a level eight on this. It goes up to a hundred. Um, so eight is almost nothing comparatively. You wanna make sure if you're gonna do this training that you need to get a good brand, a good brand of collar. We use the, um, the Mini Educator by eCollar Technologies. There's a few other good brands. If you've got something from Amazon that was 40 bucks, 60 bucks, 80 bucks, 100 bucks, it's trash. I can tell you just straight out, it's it's trash, they don't work. The lowest levels are too high for almost all dogs. And so um, with this one, level eight, like I could hit it all day long, I will never feel it. That's the level we're using for him. We know we're on the right level when he's just kind of like, huh, what's that? Like it's not painful, it's just, a, it's just an interesting sensation from nowhere. Like you couldn't feel level eight unless maybe you put it like, you know? like the most sensitive skin that you have, your inner thigh or something like that, you can maybe feel it. But it's such a low level, it's not about pain. And so that's why I wanted to start out our training series here. Um, you know, as you're getting into things, 
If you're the type of person, frankly, that says, look, I don't care about the reason. I don't care about the science behind it. I don't care. I just don't want to use corrections. This, this 10 part series isn't going to be for you. Um, but for folks that are, you know, more open-minded and they're understanding, okay, I just want to do what's best for my dog. Understand that proper corrections are best for your dog. Now, also understand dogs are different creatures than our kids. Now, how you parent is none of my business. Um, me personally, I don't spank my kids. I don't use any sort of physical correction with my kids because there's different types of correction I can use. I can take away privileges. I can have them go to their room. I can, um, I can sit down and talk with them and help them understand what their behavior means to the rest of the family. Um, and kids can understand that. Um, dogs can't. You send your dog to his room, he doesn't understand why he's being punished. He has no clue. You sit down and talk to him. A lot of our clients have tried that one. You might have already. It doesn't work. You can't sit down and talk to the dog and get him to understand this. Um, you know, yelling at him doesn't work. You know, so anyways, correction is important. But correction for dogs, dogs are such physical creatures that we want to communicate with them on levels that they understand. And so if I'm trying to communicate with him with treats and loves and kisses, that's totally fine when I'm trying to teach a concept but I'm trying to get the dog to do that concept with distraction or with, you know, when there's real stakes on the line, treats and kisses and hugs aren't going to do it. So I want to be able to use correction that's humane and fair. Um, and that's why these things, while they might look nasty, allow us to use very light levels of correction that get us very big results, off leash obedience, solving behavior problems, getting rid of aggression, you know, all of these things, it's important to use a balanced style of training. So, um, as you're going through this series, watch how we use this and you'll see that this is a very humane way to do it. The dogs stay happy and that's what it's about. It's about teaching dogs great concepts, keeping them happy. So um, if you need help, feel free to like respond uh, you know, to us here um, and, uh, and we'll tell you which brands are good. But, um, but yeah, um, these types of tools are super helpful for you and your dog. Yeah. All right, Salt Lake City Dog uh, owners, make sure that you go down below this video if you're on YouTube and get the rest of my 10-day series. Hopefully I've done enough here to help you understand why balance training and using corrections is actually the most humane way to get your dog trained um, and, uh, and using just treats and just positive reinforcement is not the best way to go. So, time to get to work with your own dog. Like I say, uh, go down below this video on YouTube and make sure you opt in for the entire 10-day series.